New numbers from the federal budget crunchers today, and they're bad. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the deficit this year will exceed $1.3 trillion. That number, the second largest shortfall in 65 years. Hugh Hewitt, radio talk show host and professor of law at Chapman University. Great to see you today, Hugh. Hey, Shannon, how are you? I'm very good, but I got to say, there is obviously concern $1.3 million or trillion dollars as a deficit, but the CBO plugs in this language and says, hey, but that's $71 billion below last year's total. So anything hopeful in this report for you? No, it's a very grim report. First of all, if you read it through, the unemployment is going to be 9.3% at the end of the year. And in fact, uh, this is already undermined by today's jobless report, the highest since last November of another half million filers for unemployment. The deficit is going to skyrocket to 70% of GDP by 2020. Uh, there is absolutely no fiscal discipline in sight. The idea that it got a little bit better from the numbers is undermined by the fact that the savings over the last CBO projection has already been spent by the Congress last month, the $26 billion. And there's a story in the Los Angeles Times this morning, Shannon, that the state of California is going to take that money that was allegedly for teachers and just plug holes in their deficit. So uh, the Obama economics have failed. The stimulus failed. The economy is idling and maybe going backwards. And the CBO sees red ink as far as the eye can see. Interesting thing, Shannon, in this report, most interesting, in 1983, after the last deep recession, uh, when Ronald Reagan cut taxes, growth that year was 8%. Growth this year is an anemic 2% in falling because President Obama is not cutting taxes despite his another rhetorical statement today. And as he admitted yesterday, he's lost touch with kitchen table issues, which are pretty hard to stay in touch with from Martha's Vineyard. Well, you mentioned the issue of tax cuts. I mean, in painting this as uh, portraying some positive news, what we're also hearing from the budget office, they say, hey, we think that this is a turnaround. We expect federal revenue to grow slightly and government spending to fall off. What do you we know, have Shannon, empirically to tell us that either one of those things is going to happen? There's nothing there. And I think the CBO is hemorrhaging credibility about at the same rate that the Congress is hemorrhaging money. One thing that is buried in here that is they're not going to want to uh, put the highlighter on, health care costs are going to rise over the next 20 years. The CBO admits today that Obamacare has failed as much as Obamanomics. Uh, this is kind of stunning when you get into the small print. They were supposed to, quote, bend the cost curve. And even their own kept Pelosi economists up on the Hill have to admit that hasn't happened. There isn't any good news here, uh, uh, Shannon. And in fact, the November elections are going to be about whether or not to return to the fiscal and stimulus tax cuts of the Reagan era or whether to continue on with the policies that brought us stagnation that we've got now and the, the Dodd-Frank housing bubble and all the other crises that we've lived with for two years. And uh, it's a pretty stark choice. All right, the CBO, of course, a nonpartisan body. But an another thing, you mentioned taxes. I mean, we've talked about that. It's come up several times just in the last couple of minutes. But they say a lot of their assumptions about looking towards future positive growth are based on the facts that they assume that big tax cuts that are about to expire, the ones that are about to expire, they're fighting about on Capitol Hill, that they're not going to get renewed. Does, is yeah, that a plus right. or a minus? That's a minus because they also refuse to do dynamic scoring. And uh, most of the people that you'll find, the economists, for example, at Americans for Prosperity, the economists on the Wall Street Journal Board of Economic Advisors, my friend uh, uh, Brian uh, uh, Westbury from uh, First Trust Capital in Chicago, they all insist that CBO is never right because they never score tax cuts the right way. If we embrace the Bush tax cuts and extend them for four, five, six years, the economy will rev up, hiring will pick up, we'll get out of this unemployment doldrum again. A half million new filers today, Shannon. And the only way to combat this, this very dire projection is to grow the economy instead of, as the president announced before he went off on, what, his third vacation in three weeks? Uh, I, I wish the rest of America could take that much time off. But the president's uh, idea that a little tax cut here, a little rhetoric there is going to fix this, that's not going to work. And the American people, as reflected in his popularity polls, are rejecting not only his policies, but the Democrats. One last point. The, uh, the deficit's $1.34 trillion. The last time the Republicans controlled Congress, in 2006, the deficit was $160 billion. So it's gone from $160 billion under four years of Nancy Pelosi to $1,300 billion. That's really a hemorrhaging of money. Well, we know there's a lot of criticism on both sides of the aisle for spending in Washington. Uh, time to dial it back probably for everyone up there. Hugh Hewitt, great to see you today. Thank you so much for weighing in. Thanks, Shannon. Good to be here.